We continue from where we left off in the last lesson. While the MM proposition with no taxes says capital structure is irrelevant, and the MM proposition with taxes says value is maximised at 100% debt because of tax shield, the static trade-off theory says there is an optimal capital structure and the trade-off is between the tax shield and the cost of financial distress. As such, the value of a levered firm is the value of an unlevered firm, plus the tax shield, minus the PV of the cost of financial distress. The value of the firm is maximised when the tax shield minus the cost of financial distress is at a maximum. You can clearly see the progression of the three theories. Let's illustrate this to help you understand. We plot the firm value against the degree of financial leverage. When debt is zero, this is the value of an unlevered firm. This line also represents MM proposition with no taxes, where the value of a leveraged firm is equal to the value of an unlevered firm. If we factor in tax shield, the value of the firm should always be increasing. This represents MM proposition with taxes, where the value of the firm is maximised at 100% debt. But if we subtract the costs of financial distress, which increases as the degree of leverage increases, we get this curve. This line represents the static trade-off theory, where the optimal capital structure is this sweet spot that maximises the firm value. We'll explain what exactly this cost of financial distress is later in this lesson, but for now we just take it that it's a cost that increases with the degree of leverage. Another way of examining the static trade-off theory is through the perspective of the cost of capital. If you recall from the last lesson, the MM proposition with no taxes says that the cost of equity increases with leverage, which totally offsets the lower cost of debt. This causes the WACC to be constant regardless of the degree. The MM proposition with taxes says the increase in cost of equity is partially reduced by the tax shield, which leads to a downward sloping WACC curve. In both the MM propositions, the implicit assumption is that the cost of debt is constant regardless of the degree of leverage, which is not true under the static trade-off theory. Due to cost of financial distress that increases with leverage, the cost of debt should curve upwards. As such, the WACC should look like this, where the minimum coincides with the optimal capital structure for the company. Note that every firm will have a different optimal capital structure that depends on each firm's operating risk, sales risk, tax situation, corporate governance, industry influences, and other factors. A firm's target capital structure is the structure that the managers use over time when making decisions about how to raise additional capital. For managers trying to maximise the value of the firm, the target capital structure should be the same as the optimal capital structure, and the firm often makes financing decisions that aim to bring the actual capital structure closer to the target. In practice, however, the actual capital structure tends to fluctuate around the target capital structure. One reason could be that the management may choose to exploit opportunities in a specific financing source. For example, a temporary rise in the firm's stock price may create a good opportunity to issue additional equity, which would result in a higher percentage of equity than the target. The other reason is simply due to market value fluctuation of the company's stocks and bond prices. Because capital structure weights are determined by market values, market fluctuations may cause the firm's actual capital structure to vary from the target. So, in summary, under MM proposition with no taxes, managers do not have a target capital structure because capital structure is irrelevant. Under MM proposition with taxes, managers should theoretically try to reach 100% debt as that is where the firm value is maximised due to maximum tax shield. The static trade-off theory recognises the benefits of increased tax shield when debt increases, but also acknowledges the increase in cost of financial distress. Managers following this approach will seek to balance the benefits of debt with the costs of financial distress and identify an optimal capital structure. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, 
head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.